grandson of the Tayabeta, so we yeah, did that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, undoubtedly, undeniably. Uh, my grandfather has been a very important figure in my life. I was so grateful to have, you know, spent my childhood and then sort of my beginning of my adult life with him. And, you know, he's been gone, gone for more than 10 years now. But yes. even now, I think he's a very much a part of my creative journey. And a lot of the things that I'm doing now, I'm thinking about the lessons I learned from him um, as a child and, and observing him work. And I take a lot of inspiration from how he not just did his work, but also lived his life and, and you know, handled with, with a lot of dignity, um, being mm-hmm. a working artist and a family person at the same time which I think is a is a struggle that not not many people talk about Absolutely. Um, but talking about the creative uh, talking talking for a moment about the creative you know I'll, I'll tell you a, a small uh, a small story which is that um, you know like you said my grandfather his work has these broad uh, swaths of color and very strong lines and yes. you know as a child you know we would be welcome in his studio to to watch him work or, or spend some time while he was working and and, you know, sometimes he would ask you, so what do you think? And um, I think the fact that it was not, it was not very complex work from a child's point of view, you know, it looked easy to understand, yet it was obviously a very deep sort of work carrying a lot of meaning to him. Right. It made you think about the smallest of things. So it made you, even as a child, without really knowing what you were doing, it made you investigate sort of why is that line? Uh, creased in this particular way why is there a color like this and then a color that goes like this which maybe pushes the frame away from you so it, mm. I think he did a lot without without really taking himself and, and this conversation with his grandson too seriously he did a lot to encourage me to start thinking about how line and color and the absence of line and color um, can really create three dimensionality and dynamism in a frame so, so you know a lot of the work that I do compositionally and in terms of color I think doesn't draw inspiration directly from the way that his works turned out, but definitely draws inspiration from his process and, and how he right. sort of talked about it and thought about it. Your, your, your granddad, Tayyip Mehta, had also made a film and uh, uh, which, which had won an award as well, but that was, of course, several, several decades ago. Uh, that was also on a very grim subject and uh, uh, a lot of it was uh, also explicit to an extent in dealing with that subject and... Uh, um, uh, what do you think about his style of, of, of making that film now that you're in the profession? I think Kudal is an amazing film. I wish more, it was accessible to more people. And, you know, it's, it's really, you know, without really having uh, derived from Kudal in my own artistic journey, I can see how so much of my inspiration is reflected in that film because my inspiration is my grandfather's work to a, to a certain extent. And how he uses punctuation and music and dance and and compositions and people are walking through spaces and architecture. Um, it's a very evolved and nuanced kind of use of of the medium because it really incorporates all these other elements. You know, it's, it's a black and white film, so it's very stark, and it yes. has dance, it has music, it has these very particular graphic images that are edited and a very clever use of montage. Um, right. to bring the audience in. I think he does everything that we've, we're talking about in terms of my process of, you know, carrying an audience through the journey. I think he, he achieved uh, to a very, very great degree in that film. As a very disciplined artist, as uh, a very strict professional, he was, he was also very harsh on himself. I mean, uh, I've uh, interviewed so many artists, but I haven't heard of anyone uh, Firstly, taking months to make a huge canvas and then entirely destroying it if you don't like it. So that's really completely cutting yourself off from the work. I mean, I can't speak for him, but I think his perfectionism is definitely something that I've, I've inherited from him. And, so, and I, do, you, do you destroy films or do you? I, just- I haven't. I haven't destroyed I haven't destroyed a film yet, but I definitely <laughs> think that it comes from a place of non-attachment for me. Yes. Uh, a place of non-attachment and and non-ego, where you don't want to you don't want to believe that something is good enough to put into the world just because you did it. You know, I think it's a great responsibility uh, to be making images. I, I know he, he's told me this in 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 not so many words that it's a great responsibility to have a camera in your hand and and to be out in the world 
capturing images that you're going to share with with thousands and thousands of people and you have to take this seriously you know it's not it's not uh, it's not joking around so you have to evaluate the work dispassionately and uh, you know talk about with yourself whether the intent was captured in the in the work or whether just the fact that you maybe had a moving experience while you were creating the work uh, and and it didn't it didn't translate into the final image is mm-hmm. that good enough reason to put it out out into the world so so this is a rigor of of the of the artistic method that i think i definitely have in my own way uh developed and and inspired by by his discipline i've i've met him so many times uh in in my uh reporting life and in my journalism career and of course been a huge fan of his work uh you're of course building your own um cultural legacy and identity through your own work uh, which uh, which is which is award winning which is landmark and which is really taking it to uh, another another point altogether uh, another peak altogether uh, but uh, if uh, if one is to uh, in in your style and sensibility if one is to make a film on the yamata on his life on his um, on his art how would you approach that because we've seen a lot of typical documentaries on modern indian art and uh, i i personally would really like to see something that is breaking barriers and breaking that whole mold of how a documentary is made on an artist and uh, how would you approach that absolutely you know that's such a good question and and that's such a wonderful project you know our perspective on it my mine my mother's and you know the family's perspective on it is definitely of the person that we saw who was you know a human being and also an artist and i think everybody else sees it maybe the other way around they see the artist and the icon uh first and then if they had you know access to him or, or they knew him personally then they see the person behind the work and right. so i think anything that i did and and it's something that we've been we've been sort of developing and and working on for a long long time now and and hopefully oh, wow. it it comes to fruition is yeah. is a documentary that 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 sees the human being first you know sees sees him from our perspective which is which is really the only perspective we can honestly embody i think because we knew him so so closely is uh you know giving giving people hopefully a perspective on it that shows where the work was coming from in terms of his personal life in terms of you know how he how he spent his uh, childhood and how he grew up and how he sort of grew into this icon that people mm-hmm. know as as, as the Yamata and, and so much has been written about that person and we are right. more interested in what's you know the formative part of that and and what's behind the work and and his process and and how he dealt with the uh, the challenges that came in his way you know through to right. the end of his life he was always uh struggling with with uh, creative challenges and also other things so so that's our sort of uh, inroad into his story and hopefully mm-hmm. we get to make it someday absolutely absolutely i i look forward to that as well uh, uh, because uh, i've uh, uh, i've seen how differently he was projected by the art market and the media visibly how he was as a person and uh, i i look forward to more brilliant films from your side it's uh, it's been uh, it's been fascinating looking at your work and uh, tracking your journey and uh, many many more decades to go farad so uh, yeah thank you to you and uh, thank you so much for your time thank you for being with us and our viewers here at honor charcha thanks sir thanks for having me bye <laughs>